Hello everyone and welcome to the Banner Broadcast, a Banner Pipeline Project initiative where we provide professional development resources for civically engaged leaders in the higher education and nonprofit sectors. In the inside scoop of a civically engaged higher education career series, we will explore what it means to lead a career in this sector and learn from the experiences of six professionals currently working in the field. In today's episode, Pathways, our guest speakers will share their stories on how they got into the field of civic engagement in the higher education sector. The question that our interviewers will respond to is, what are the highlights of your story into the field and how did Banner influence you to continue in this line of work? First, we have Ariel del Rosario, Project Manager at Project Pericles and Banner alum, who will share with us how Banner and her college experiences influenced her to pursue this field. How I got involved with civic engagement in higher education started with Bonner. I realized how much of a difference your college education can make in the trajectory of your career. It wasn't until my experience with Bonner that I realized how much leadership potential there is, not only in myself, but my fellow students. As a student in higher education, I realized we have a lot of power. We can make a difference in this world, whether I'm an accountant or if I am a scientist. Uh, I studied psychology because I worked with people and you can make a really big difference by working with people. And I minored in education because I saw the power education had in changing somebody. And so I've always had an interest in working in higher education. Um, I got my master's degree in cognition and science and society from the University of Edinburgh. And the reason I wanted to do that was it showed me how to analyze data and how to affect thinking so that programs can be effective in producing social good. Afterwards, I worked at the Ivory Dream Foundation, which is a long-term college readiness program that works with low-income youth, primarily of color. And I worked there for a few years advising students in the college and career department. So again, that connection of college makes a big difference and having increased the access for students to have that opportunity. And actually in Bonner, that was one of my sites. I was a mentor at uh, New Brunswick School. So I saw the power firsthand of how much of a difference it makes to have someone mentor you through your own college uh, career. Afterwards, when I moved back to New Jersey, which is where I'm from, I saw that Project Pericles had an opening and I jumped at it because I saw that they were promoting civic engagement in higher education. And it's that kind of difference that they were making that made me who I am today. Joshua Rodriguez, a student development program manager of the Sweater Center at Brown University, discusses how his involvement in building awareness about social issues during college motivated him to pursue higher education. What he appreciated the most about this work was the opportunity to mentor students to become more civically responsible regardless of the field they pursue. Shout out to James Shields, the Bonner Director at Guilford College. I call up and he tells me about this program and I tell him, you know, I go to church and I do a lot of service and at my, at my high school, I did this service project on refugee communities and child soldiers. And, and like that, that it was different for me because it's not just sort of like, here's a project where I'm giving information, but like I had ideas on what can be done to help these individuals. I knew I had a knack for that and a passion. Saw that in my application, reached out, and we had a conversation. And next thing you know, I joined the Bonner program at Guilford. And I joined a program called Latino Impact, where we help students from the Alamance County learn after school through sort of tutoring and mentorship and sports activities. And then we also, I also got myself involved in uh, I Am A Leader, which is a sort of college access fair for like students in those counties in North Carolina. Um, and we teach them about like, what does it mean to be undocumented and apply to college? We also teach them about like, what is that college application process? We even had a session for families in there parents right so that was really sort of cool to be involved in so that all that bonner experience i had there taught me that like there is a great deal of time within college to build awareness and i use that as 
sort of my time there is like I built so much awareness around what social issues there were in the community and the world. And that influenced me to go ahead. And when I graduated, I applied to be at AmeriCorps Vista for two years at a local nonprofit in Providence, Rhode Island that was working to eliminate summer learning melt with students and also mentor and tutor them throughout the school year. And a part of my role there was to also establish and build a college access program for their um, middle school uh, graduates who are matriculating into high school to create a program for them in high school so that they stay connected, they stay thinking about um, their educational experience and, and keep this relationship with their families and their peers. <coughs> and that really sort of motivated me because I, what I did is I recruited college students nearby to facilitate these um, sessions with these students. And what I noticed is that like, I really had a great deal of passion for bringing these groups of people together. College students who have the mind and the time and the energy to learn and build awareness, but also act on the issues that they see are wrong with the communities that are quote unquote in need, right? Although so they have so much resources, so what they're in need of is only from our perspective, right? But they have so many resources and riches that we often overlook. So I made sure that like that was a big component of what I did. And then I saw this job open up and I said, this is exactly the route that I want to go to. I want to mentor young college students on how to be more civically responsible. How do they make use of their time in college to do good and transform whatever they want to become in life? Whether you want to be a lawyer, a Wall Street guy, or whether you want to be a teacher or whatever, how will a community engagement experience change or influence the way you do that? That's like different from the norm. Third, we have Kelly Finn, the Student Development Program Manager of the Sweater Center at Brown University and Banner alum, sharing a funny story of how she ended up in the Banner world and working in higher education. I have a funny story in terms of the way I got into Bonner, where I went to school at Siena College. At one point, we were placing all Bonners living in the same dorm together. So, and I happened to be placed in a hallway where it was pretty much all Bonners, and I was not a Bonner. And I get there on my first day to move in, and all these people know each other already because they had been through orientation together. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I'm not going to have any friends because they all know each other. Um, and then there's me like off in the corner. That's not at all what happened. They quickly recruited me into their friend group and they became like my sisters immediately. It took maybe three months, not even before they were like, oh, you should come with one of us to our Girl Scout program that we run in Albany and like help out as a volunteer. And I was like, okay, why not? What else am I doing? And then uh, by the end of my first semester, they said, why don't you just apply for this program? You're doing everything anyway. I was like going to their study halls with them and going to Girl Scouts, doing all the Bonner things. I just wasn't a Bonner. Um, so I applied and got in. I feel like I just fell here almost. It just sort of happened. And as I look back on my life, that's how everything has unfolded. I haven't planned to get here. Um, but I also think back to my childhood. Um, my grandma, who's a really big influence on me, was a high school teacher. And, um, but I think back, and I think the seeds were sort of there all along to think about the importance of education, and she always instilled that in me. So I don't think it was totally by accident, but I think I sort of ended up in the Bonner world in a funny way. I learned a lot through college. Originally, I came in and I studied psychology as an undergrad, so I think I always knew I wanted to like help people in some way, but I didn't know how, and I thought I wanted to work with younger kids originally, um, and I quickly found out that I like kids, but I couldn't do that all the time. I think just being in spaces with my peers was really inspiring for, for me, and I learned a lot from the 18-year-olds I was next to, and I was like, oh, this seems like a cool career. Essentially, I ended up graduating a semester early um, on purpose, and I sort of figured out how I could do that and make all the credits fit. And then I got offered a position as like a postgraduate fellow, which was sort of our Bonner coordinator position at the time um, at Siena College. So I started two weeks after graduating. It was a really quick turnaround time. And really where I learned probably everything I know today about leadership was that first year because I was still in a place where I was sort of leading my peers because people who were in my class cohort were still 
there and I was you know sort of in this like authoritative role and I didn't really know what to do with that luckily I had a wonderful mentor April who's my first supervisor and she sort of showed me the way and it credit her and a lot of my other colleagues for all of my growth in that year um, but I think sort of being thrown into that first professional role taught me a lot about what to do and what not to do and then I ended up taking on a full-time position there within about six months. And I directed the Bonner program there for the last three years and joined the team here in January. So I'm still pretty new to Brown. I think through a series of, you know, periods of growth and challenge, I sort of veiled things about me that I didn't know. And I sort of came into my own as a leader in, I think, a really quick way because I had a lot on my plate. And I think you learn a lot when you're sort of put to the test. And that's what the last three years were. And um, I hit a place probably in the last year where I knew I needed to grow in new ways. And I think Bonner taught me that. We had the saying that I'm sure all Bonners use, like, get comfortable with the uncomfortable. And so I'm always someone who's searching for like, what's the next thing? What am I going to do? And sometimes that's a difficult life too, because sometimes you're like never happy where you are. And I've had to work on that too, because I think my natural inclination is to like keep growing and keep challenging myself. But you also have to be content where you are. Um, but I hit a point where I was ready for something new. So I was lucky enough that this, this opportunity was offered to me. And I sort of packed up my life there and in a matter of weeks like came into a brand new city um, and moved by myself with my dog. Um, I really needed this. Like I think I'm I'm comfortable with my job, but the the personal growth that's taken place by just like planting yourself in a new city and having to start over a little bit is awesome. And I think at the age I'm at, I'm like, when else am I gonna do this? I need to do this now. So that's what got me here. Following up we have Matthew Brian Cheney. Banner alum, assistant professor of English, and director of the Banner Center for Service Learning and Civic Engagement at Carson Newman University, telling us how his Banner experience influenced the way he observed the world and communities. Furthermore, he highlights the power of individual stories. I, mean, I got into the Bonner program at Carson Newman in 2004. Um, I came here as a freshman and my admissions counselor knew that I had done some service in the past. He was like, you know, why don't, you know, this program, the Bonner program, they're always looking for guys because it's like, <laughs> like they always need, uh, it's a problem. And so I think if you applied for this, I think you might have a good shot at getting into it. So I looked into it and it looked really difficult, but it looked like something I could probably do. Um, and so I applied and I got in. It, certainly being a Bonner scholar for four years as a college student changed my life. I mean, it, it, it opened up different ways of thinking, different ways of listening to people and existing in the world. Uh, I found my spouse through the Bonner program. It's one thing to just have beliefs and it's another thing to get to know people who were in poverty or who have kids that they don't have time to take care of or who are facing any number of different issues. In rural Appalachia, we have a huge child welfare problem. We have a huge drug problem. Lots of things that our community is facing. And so being a Bonner really forced me to reconsider some of the things that I believed about how the world works and why people are in poverty. I definitely grew up in that belief that if you're poor, it's because you don't want to work or uh, because you did something morally wrong and you're being punished or something. Uh, it's just not true. And, I, <laughs> and Bonner really helped me believe that. And, but, but I also learned that it was difficult to kind of talk about these things with other people. I started taking English classes and we would be, you know, talking about a short story by somebody like James Baldwin or Flannery O'Connor or Sandra Cisneros. You're reading like these stories, people who I would never have access to in my life. I'm reading their stories and, I'm, and I started to see connections between learning uh, from people who are not like me through stories and how that also helps me just think about the world in a way that's helpful. It's very difficult if we're going to have a debate about an issue, like something big like immigration or climate change. Um, it's another thing. If you read a story about a group of people who deal with this issue, and then you're going to talk about them as characters, and then that's going to open up a different way of thinking and talking about an issue. Um, and I just got really interested in that. And so I was headed into the ministry. I wanted to be a youth minister and go to seminary. And I completely shifted gears. I became an English major because I just got really passionate about that. And my Bonner work really fed the desire that I had to know more about the community. I didn't just want to watch movies and talk about things. I wanted to actually get out there and do stuff and, 
feel like I was actually making a difference. Um, and I felt like Bonner gave me a chance to do that. I got a little bit older in college. We had 100% staff turnover in six months. And uh, I was a student leader at the time in the program and kind of had to step up and do a lot of leadership stuff, even do like financial paperwork. I had to plan meetings talk to other Bonners who weren't getting their hours. I, I got to be where I really liked it. I really liked being on the backside of, of Bonner work and deciding how these discussions go. And um, Ari Hoy, uh, now with Dr. Hoy, and uh, Annie Pasqua, who's a former staffer at the foundation, came to campus to kind of help us work through these difficulties we were having as a program. And Ari pulled me aside one day and she said, well, have you applied for this position to be the coordinator for the program? And I said, well, no, they, they want somebody with a master's degree. And she was like, yeah, but you could do the job. You'd be really good at it. You should just apply for it. So I, I'm sitting where I am today because Ari Hoy you know, pulled me aside 12 years ago and told me I didn't have to have a master's degree to have a job. <laughs> you know, so every time I see her and everybody, Wayne, when he was at the, at the foundation, and Bobby, uh, they kind of gave me a career in, in a sense. And so I applied for the job, even though I didn't have a master's degree yet. I, I was the coordinator here for three years. That was really hard, being in a program with people, and then all of a sudden I'm in charge of them. I like becoming a manager at a fast food restaurant when you've worked there for a while. <laughs> but I still liked it. I liked serving on committees. I liked being involved in big decisions at the university. I liked trying to raise money. But in higher education, um, if you want to advance, you really do need to get those degrees. And so I, after three years, I went to the University of Tennessee and I got a master's. I missed the classroom. I missed books. I missed talking about literature and American culture. I just knew if I didn't try to go to graduate school, I'd always wonder. Done it. So I, I decided I'd get a master's degree. And if I hated it, um, well, that I could just try to find another Bonner job somewhere because I liked that. So I, so I did a master's in English. And I didn't hate it. In fact, I wanted to keep going and be a faculty member. So I applied to PhD programs and I got into the University of Kentucky. Oh, and I'm actually still finishing. I'm not Dr. Brian mm -hmm. yet. I moved, my wife and I moved to Lexington, Kentucky to be at the University of Kentucky. And while I was there, I, I saw little opportunities to get involved in the community. Um, my wife and I became foster parents, got involved in child welfare stuff. But it was also there that started to realize that Many of the people in my field, people who study American literature, like I said, they're good people, you know, but not as engaged in the community. So I found myself kind of caught between kind of two things, uh, wanting to do kind of more community engagement work, but also, you know, wanting to be a scholar. And so along the way, I had some mentors who were really encouraging that really helped me um, to do it. I was working on my dissertation and I got a call from Barry Osborne, who was the director of the Bonner Center when I was a student. And he just said, hey, I, I don't know if you heard that, but the director at the Bonner Center at Carson Newman is leaving. Would you at all be interested in thinking about applying for that job? You know, I got a whole life in Kentucky. You know, I, in my mind, I was going to be there another year and a half. My kid's like in fourth grade. And, uh, but my wife and I had always felt a real sense of kind of calling and wanting, wanting to be in East Tennessee and really missing Carson Newman. She has a lot of really unique problems that are ongoing. So I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll make a couple of calls and see if they would take me, even though, again, I don't have the degree. This is a theme in my life where I get the job before I have the degree. And so I went through the process, got the job. And uh, it's hard to get a job with a PhD in English. There are not many jobs if you want to be an English professor. And so one of the things that motivated me to stay involved in community engagement I mean, it's just that there's more jobs. And um, so it's perfect now where I'm, I get to be a professor. I teach English now, but I also get to do the administrative honor stuff that I like to do. Now we have Gretchen Milkey, Assistant Dean for Civic Engagement at Weiner University and Banner alum, sharing an interesting story of how she joined Banner and her path to leading a civically engaged career in higher education. Her story reaffirms how unique one's path could be. Let's hear more from Gretchen. Honor, absolutely. So I was very much like you guys. I came to Dickinson as a freshman to pre orientation service, hated it. It was awful. It rained, there was lots of lectures, they did not have any backups. We like sat in a building for like four days. And at the end of it, being like a sassy freshman, I was like, Are there gonna be any more lectures? And my director of civic engagement did not appreciate that. So he like hated me. He saw me, I had federal work study, so I was working in the dining hall. And so one day he kind of jokingly asked if I wanted to work there. And I was like, yes, but like he didn't mean it. And so I didn't mind this till afterwards, of course, because he was very honest with me later. 
And he said in October, like we kind of worked on a few projects and started like, we, we clicked, we had a great time. And um, he handed me a piece of paper and said, I want you to start this thing called the Bonner Program. Like here it is, go contact the foundation, have fun with it, see you later. And I was like a second semester freshman, I'm like what? I don't know what this is. I don't even know this community. I have no idea what we're doing. Um, what? <laughs> so I did. I started this program called Bonner Program at Dickinson College, and we I recruited some of my peers who I had been in free orientation service with. And the year we started with AmeriCorps, so we were a Bonner Leader School. The Iraq War started, and so we were they froze all AmeriCorps programs going into uh, the war. So we just said, we don't care. We're just going to keep going. We're just going to be in the service because that's what we care about. And um, so we moved forward. So as a sophomore, I went to my first Bonner Congress. I, st I interned for the foundation as a junior in college. We hosted the, the Bonner Congress meeting my senior year, and my director got called to active duty. So he left. So I was like by myself, like running a Bonner Congress, no director, like, Oops, sorry, John, he's not there. I miss you, where are you? <laughs> and um, we ran it, it went really well. We were excited about it. And they offered me his job when I graduated. But I decided to go to a Fulbright in South Korea. And I wanted to compare volunteerism in the US to volunteerism in a Confucian-based society. And so I turned them down and went abroad for a year in South Korea and worked in an orphanage, which I have since learned that's actually a terrible thing to do and just fosters more and more orphanages around the world. But I was not yet educated on that as a topic and came back, worked for the Bonner Foundation as a program associate. One of the, that two year position, I was doing AmeriCorps management and I traveled to schools and, and helped like meet with and do campus consulting. I worked there for two years, met Matthew Johnson at a community-based research conference that we had in Princeton. And he said, hey, do you want to come work for me at Siena? And I said, oh, yeah, no problem. So they had a Bonner program that was in, like not very old, um, had just started growing. And I worked there for three years. And we rebuilt it and did some really cool things, built in some international internships and connections. It's just really cool to build a program and work with him and like build an office for civic engagement from scratch. I got burned out. And I wanted to get my master's so I could make more money. So I left. Dick and I went to American University and got my master's in international affairs with a focus in comparative and regional studies in Asia. Ended up working and interning their alternative break program. So I ran their 15 alternative breaks. Um, to different countries. It was a very international program and then stayed on to run their community-based research scholar program, which was just starting. And one of my students died, one of my Bonner students at, at Siena. And he had become a VISTA at Baltimore. And we were running a service learning and community engagement uh, conference. And he was on the planning committee with me and he, he passed away that day. So he never, he was on a treadmill and, and never woke up. So, um, I was really bummed and really sad. And I went to his funeral and Ari sent me the job description for this job and said, hey, I think you'd be really good at this and you should check it out. And so I interviewed and everybody seemed great. Widener has its own charter school. They have our own like PT clinic that provides free services to the community. They run a social work clinic, they have a nursing clinic. They have a community engaged teaching where students are learning how to teach in community schools, community mentors. So I was really excited about how like institutionally committed Widener seemed to be for uh, civic engagement. So I decided to move to Widener and I've been here for four years. Lastly, we have Dr. Milbar Whitney, Director of the Banner Office of Community Service at Morehouse College, narrating his pathway to higher education and how his experience came full circle. I'm a community psychologist. I, ha I got a master's degree in psychology. Um, from Howard University. I went into psychology because when I was undergraduate school, I would either go to graduate school or to Vietnam. I picked psychology because I was good at it. And I never even knew, I never knew a psychologist. And then I went and taught at Southern University. And I was the only one in the department that had a PhD. So as a result, I was doing all the eight o'clock classes and all the classes that people didn't want. So I said, okay, I've gone this far. Let me look at a PhD. 
And so I was recruited by this program at Michigan State. So what the program was, was recruiting people to register in a small new program. And what happened is that uh, Dr. Fairweather was trying to get psychologists to be more social change agents. It was a great program because we were basically being taught as social change agents. After that, my first job was teaching at the University of Cincinnati. But for me, my laboratory was the community, especially the African-American community. So when I got to Cincinnati, I knew nothing about Cincinnati, and I started going out and going to the black community, just finding out, can I help you? Can I help you do research? Can I help you do thought, whatever? And, I, and, a, and a gentleman never saw someone from the university do that. So he offered me a job to be an associate director of a United Way agency. And he gave me an offer that I couldn't refuse. And so then I became an administrator in a large social service agency that served the African American community and the Appalachian community in Cincinnati. And also at the same time as doing research, that really was a good fit for me. And, uh, and then they recruited me to be the director of human relations for the city of Cincinnati. And so that was a very political job for the mayor. It was a five-year job, and that's how long I stayed here for five years. I found out enough about the city that it wasn't going to change that I had to leave. So I had to come into Atlanta, which was, I think, a little more progressive, and uh, worked uh, here uh, running a, uh, the Head Start programs for the county. Time I came back, got, I was teaching uh, at Morehouse as an adjunct, and then a position at Morehouse came open. I got hired and taught in psychology for ten years, and I also was aware of the Bonner program because when I was teaching, I also had a service learning aspect of my course, which back then there wasn't a lot of that. But the job came open, and the provost wanted me to try to uh, be the director of the Bonner program, but also teach part time and to see if you like this and if we like you. And that was 10 years ago. Obviously, hopefully they like me, and def I definitely like what I'm doing. I stopped teaching. It's hard to do both. So that's kind of been my career to this position. It fits in terms of what I'm doing in terms of community psychologists, in terms of you know, research, in terms of mentoring. I mean, when I came to Morehouse, I couldn't believe they're going to pay me to, to, to teach and mentor American male. It's a full circle for me. It's been a, a great opportunity. Thanks to all our guest speakers for sharing their experiences and personal stories. Thank you so much everyone for listening and learning with us today. This concludes the third episode of the Inside Scoop of a Civically Engaged Higher Education Career. Wondering where to find more videos? Find us on YouTube as Banner Network. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We're also on the Bonner website at www.bonner.org. Bye.